we now have a notion of the orthogonality of a collection of vectors. Let's understand now what it means for a matrix to be orthogonal. So let's start with, let's let U be an N by N matrix with entries in the real numbers, right? So no complex numbers, no nothing. Then the matrix U is orthogonal if we have the U times U transpose, which is the same as U transpose times U is equal to the identity. So this is what it means for a matrix to be orthogonal. First, let's see an example, and then we'll try to uh, maybe get a better understanding of why this is the criteria to be orthogonal. So let's look at an example. Let's show that the vector, or the vector, the matrix U given by 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 0. We want to show that this is orthogonal. Right? Well, what do we need to show? We need to show, we don't need to, so in general, we don't need to show this. Okay? We just need to show that one of these products is equal to the identity in general, right? So to show this, we need to show that U times U transpose is the identity. Well, if you'll notice, this matrix is symmetric. You see, if you take U transpose, if you swap rows for columns, you get the same matrix. So here, what we have is that U transpose is also 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Well, then let's look at the product of u. Well, really, we're looking at uh, the matrix u squared, right? Because we're multiplying u by itself. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, times 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Oh, sorry, negative 1, negative 1. 0, negative 1, 0. And what we get in this case is exactly the identity, right? You can see this is a relatively simple um, matrix multiplication to take here. And you can almost get the identity immediately. And so this is an example. This u here is an example of an orthogonal matrix. OK, so one observation or conclusion that we can make is, and proving it isn't so trivial, but observing it is, is pretty straightforward. If you look at the column vectors of an orthogonal matrix, you'll notice that those column vectors make up a set of vectors that is orthogonal. So. Let's say U is the matrix with column vectors U1 through UN, right? Where UI are column vectors. Then U orthogonal means that the set of vectors of column vectors u1 through un, so let's say this is an orthogonal matrix, right? This is synonymous with the collection of column vectors being orthogonal. So this means that this collection u1 through un is an orthogonal set of vectors. 
right? So if basically what we have here, and you could show that in this matrix, each column vector here is um, orthogonal, right? Or every pair, excuse me, every pair of these vectors here are orthogonal. And you could show that in each case, their dot product, like every pair, their dot product is zero, right? And so this collection is orthogonal. So this is maybe a more intuitive way to understand orthogonality of a matrix, right? Versus just this formula that, oh, U times U transpose has to be the identity, right? This is more beneficial for practice or application, right? Because then it's very easy to verify orthogonality, but this notion is better for intuition or, or understanding, right? And so it's important to be able to grasp both concepts here. Okay, next what I want to do is state and prove a few propositions of orthogonal matrices. And so here is a, I'm going to list it as one proposition, but then we'll break it down in three parts here. So first proposition that we have is that U is orthogonal. This implies that the determinant of u is plus or minus one. So the determinant of an orthogonal matrix is always plus or minus one. We'll prove that. We'll also prove that if A and B are two orthogonal matrices, then we have that the product AB and A inverse exist and both the product AB and A inverse are orthogonal. Okay, so how can we prove this? Well, so let's say here, because we're gonna have to prove the product and the inverse property separately, right? So let's say this is like B part one, and this is B part two. But first let's prove A. So we want to show that if U is orthogonal, then the determinant is equal to plus or minus one. Okay. Well, then let's look at the determinant of U. Well, we, we have this property that if you square the determinant, right, Um, or not the property of square, but if you square the determinant, sorry, train of thought. If you have the determinant squared, that's the same as the determinant times itself, but we know, let's recall, that the determinant of a matrix is equal to the determinant of that, the transpose of that matrix, right? Which means we can exchange one of these for the determinant of the transpose. So let's say the determinant of U times the determinant of the transpose. So U transpose here. And then we know that, so, sorry, this is a proof, right? I need to state that. And this is a proof for part A. We know that if you have the product well, the determinant of the product is the product of the determinant, right? And so this is the determinant of U times U transpose, right? The product of the determinant is the determinant of the product. But U is orthogonal. So this is the determinant of the identity matrix. And the determinant of the identity matrix is always one, but now that we have the determinant squared, right? If we kind of look at the big picture, where did we start, where are we at? We have that the determinant squared is one. Well, if you take the square root of both sides, you get that the determinant of U is equal to plus or minus one, right? Okay, so we've proven part A. Let's prove B part one. What we wanna show is, and I won't show the existence, right? Um, 
the existence is, is pretty straightforward. Um, basically what you have to do is, well, for the products that exists because you're taking an N by N matrix times an N by N matrix. Um, for the inverse, you know, you use some properties of the inverse, et cetera, et cetera. But I won't include the proof of that for now. So we're taking for granted the existence. And now we want to show that the product A times B, so here we have A and B, these are orthogonal. We want to show, right? What do we want to show? To show that the product AB is orthogonal, we need to show that AB times AB transpose is the identity. So let's show that. Well, what is AB times AB transpose? Remember for square matrices, we have the property that the transpose of the product is the product of the transposes flipped, right? And so this is B transpose, A transpose. Then we have the associativity of matrix multiplication, which means we can group this however we want. And so let's say we have A times B, B transpose times A transpose. But B is an orthogonal matrix. So this is A times the identity times A transpose, which is really just A times A transpose. But A is also orthogonal, right? And so A, A transpose is the identity. Cool. So we've proven the second property. Let's prove the third property, right? To prove the third property, we need the following assumption. So a orthogonal, so here's a claim, A orthogonal implies that A inverse equals A transpose. And I want you guys to prove this, proof by you. Proof, okay? So see if you can prove that, that if you have an orthogonal matrix, the inverse is the same as the transpose. It's a good, uh, good exercise. And so I'm going to use this, right? Say after you've proven this, we can now use this. And what do we want to show? We want to show, well, we, if we want to show that the inverse is orthogonal, we want to show that A inverse, A inverse transpose is the identity. Okay, well, how could we show that? First, let's consider a inverse inverse, right? Well, this is just A, which is also a transpose transpose. But if the identity in this case where A is orthogonal, if the, excuse me, not the identity, if the inverse and the transpose are the same, well, then we could write this as say A inverse transpose, right? And so now let's use this deduction to try and show that A inverse times A inverse transpose is the identity. Well, we have A inverse times A inverse transpose. We've just said, right, by this um, string of equalities here, that A inverse inverse is the same as A inverse transpose. So that means A inverse transpose here is A inverse, well, sorry, a inverse times A inverse inverse. But A inverse inverse is A. So we have A inverse A, which is the identity QED. Okay. So now we've explored what it means for a matrix to be orthogonal. And we've also explored and even proven uh, some important properties of orthogonal matrices. And what we're going to do next is we're going to look at an algorithm for constructing orthogonal and orthonormal sets. And so it's called the Gram-Schmidt process or the Gram-Schmidt algorithm. And that's what we'll uh, be doing in the next video.